at that, would you? Look at that. Would you, would you get a load of this? Get a load of this guy over here. Hey. How you doing over there? Welcome hey, to the Dead Podcast. This is I'm Bob. I'm here with Will. Yeah. Will, Will, how are you doing? I, I am Will, coming at you live in four frames a second. <laughs> <laughs> this is Discord's fault. Blame Discord. I'm sure yeah. people will say say your camera's still better than mine, though. And I and I'll yeah, be salty about oddly. it. Uh, yeah. Anyway, how's everybody doing? I hope you're all doing good. I'm glad that you're here. Uh, we have many things to talk about today. Well, I wanted to show this to you quick. Greg okay. Miller before tweeted, uh, "What's the more popular franchise?" And it was, "Oh uh, yes, Sonic or Zelda." And I was Nine. like, "Well, I was like, well, obviously it's wait, wait a minute." <laughs> I like had a hard time <laughs> thinking which one it is. I, I know what the answer is. Is it because you cheated? And I know it's the correct answer. No. How do you but know? I, it's I, the correct I know answer. the answer is Zelda, but I still voted for Sonic. I still voted for Sonic. You know the answer is Zelda? Why do you know the answer is Zelda? I know the answer is Zelda. Because I'm pretty sure overall lifetime, Zelda has sold more games than Sonic. And obviously, Zelda games are more highly regarded and highly revered than Sonic games are. Zelda is a pure video game series. It hasn't been diluted, really, by extraneous media, whereas Sonic, you know, there's there's a long-running comic book series, there's, like, five animated shows, there's a movie, there's all this other crap that, like, sort of dilutes the brand to an extent. And, you know, lest we forget, there was a good period of 10 years where Sonic just had bad game after bad game. Um, so that that definitely sent its popularity nosediving, whereas uh, Zelda just focused on good game after good game after good game. Having said that, I still voted for Sonic because, you know, I bleed Cobalt Blue in reality <laughs> over here. So, um, I... So... Obviously, Zelda has. Uh, if, if we if we go, you know, per capita, Zelda has the better games. I'm yeah. not, I don't even like Zelda games. <laughs> I, I I just know that there's more bad Sonic games than there are bad Zelda games. Um, mm -hmm. So you would think Zelda would be the more popular franchise. Sonic, though, iconic character, iconic pose. Yeah. Come on, it's the blue blur. <laughs> So I did a little Google Trends, Will, and oh you'll boy. be surprised if we're just okay. doing the words Zelda and Sonic, Sonic wins by a long shot. Now, as you really? were talking, I realized Sonic is an actual word in the English language. <laughs> so maybe that's why Sonic wins. So yeah. I, did a little, I did a little rehashing. Sonic the Hedgehog versus Zelda will... No, Sonic the Hedgehog versus the le just Legend of Zelda. So not even the. Sonic the Hedgehog right. versus Legend of Zelda. Sonic pulls out on top a little bit. There was really? some there was some farce going on between November and February. Right. Where Zelda pulled ahead. What could what could have happened with Zelda then? In February? It started in November. Okay. When did Age Zelda of Calamity come out? Oh, there you go. That was it. That would be Age it. Age of Calamity, and then they announced the um, the Skyward Sword remake. Wasn't it around that time? Uh, it, it was in. It was probably here. It was probably in the beginning of the year. Yeah, January. Yeah. Uh, and then people in the chat are saying Sonic movie, and that's when Sonic had a big jump. Uh, yeah. I did the Legend of Zelda, and if we put the in Legend of Zelda, Sonic crushes it. Really. So, even though Sonic hasn't had anything going on in a while, Will, Sonic's the bigger franchise. Mm -hmm. I will say, or Sonic's I just looked the bigger up, name. I looked up on Wikipedia the list of the best selling video game franchises. Mm -hmm. The Legend of Zelda, the whole series, has sold 117.34 million units. Okay. Sonic the Hedgehog has sold 100. 
and 45.61 oh! million units. Damn. People in the chat are saying not even comparable. Guys, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's an actual yeah. thing that we... It sounds, in my brain, I don't want to compare the two. But it's it just... And, and for, you know, for, you know, your information out there, The Legend of Zelda and Sonic are separated by Star Wars and Madden. Oh my god. So Star Wars and Madden have sold more than The Legend of Zelda. Madden, I understand. Star Wars, yeah. Like, I, well, Star are, we Wars, about, are we talking about yeah, Star games? Star Wars is unfair because, like, there's, like, a million Star Wars games. There's only, like, okay. 20 Legend of Zelda games. Okay. I, I understand. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, I would never say, like, one... Like, I would never say, like... Sonic the Hedgehog 3 is better than the original or, or a link it's better than a link to the past. Those are two completely yeah. different games, you know? Um but we're talking about the size of a franchise here. And I mean also Sonic has a lot of other stuff outside of games. And I know Zelda yeah. does too, but Sonic is kind of crushing in that in that aspect. Yeah. Um So I mean, I I was kind of shocked by this. I was kind of I was kind of uh I, I was I was surprised by 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 this. I don't know what the hell brought this up. I would like to listen to that podcast that they were doing. Um, well, so I think because like two Sonic stories broke, uh, then we'll get to them in this podcast. Mm -hmm. So that's probably what prompted the Sonic part of it. I don't know what prompted the Zelda part of it. <laughs> I can only speculate, and I'm sure it was very heated. Whatever it yes. was. Um. Somebody in the chat, where is it? Oh, Royson says Zelda versus Pokemon. You can't compare anything to Pokemon because Pokemon yeah. is in another stratosphere. <laughs> Pokemon's the biggest franchise of all time ever. Any well, franchise. In <laughs> in according to Wikipedia, the games have sold 373.15 million copies. But... That puts it one, two, three, fifth best selling video game series of all time. <gasps> the top five are in order Pokemon, Super Mario, Call of Duty, wow. Tetris, and then just Mario. <laughs> Wait, Mario's in it twice? Yes. Mario's in the top five twice. You can't twice. do that. One, you can't do that. This is. <laughs> I'm, I'm going by Wikipedia. They're never wrong. They have Mario, the overall Mario franchise, and then they break it up into... That's how big Mario is, that he has all these sub-franchises that do gangbuster numbers. Like, Super Mario is its own series. Mario Kart is its own series with one with 156.47 million. Wait, so Mario Kart doesn't count as the Mario franchise? Mario Kart, it does, but... Put it this way, Mario Kart has sold so many copies, it counts as its own thing in addition to being part of the Mario series. That's dumb. Well, it's like, think of it like the, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. The Iron Man movies have made a, a lot more money than the Captain America movies, so much so that that can count as like its own highest okay, grossing fine. franchise. Fine. Fine. Just saying, like I get, I understand the mentality, and if anything, that just shows how strong those series are. Tech Niner Mario says, Party is not spun off in its own thing. Tech Niner says Call of Duty Golf. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would play that. I would also play that. That would probably be be fun. Yeah, um, for once. Anyway, so wait. Okay, never mind. <laughs> okay. Um, I for, I, for, I forgot I forgot where, where we what 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 number is Sonic in the in the biggest franchises gaming uh, franchises? Hold on, I gotta reopen the tab. Um, Mario is like the Beatles. I'm surprised Mario is number one best selling franchise in video games. I mean, you gotta po Pokemon, consider it. Pokemon is biggest franchise. Pokemon is biggest franchise, period, with you period. include everything. Because it's because it's not the, just games. It's the anime, it's the movie, it's the, the plushies. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, you I gotta do, count uh, it because it's not like listed. Oh, uh, it's that far down. 11. I sixteen. I didn't expect it to be that far down. It's six. The sixteen. Oh, I mean, the the sixteenth biggest video game franchise is still like when you consider all the video game franchises that are out there. You know, it's bigger than Resident Evil. It's bigger than uh, Dragon Quest. It's bigger than Tomb Raider. It's bigger than Halo. It's bigger than Monster Hunter. Monster. Well, I'm not bigger, surprised about Monster Hunter. <laughs> it's bigger than Smash Brothers. Okay. In terms of units sold. Uh, is it just me or is Will's audio out? It's probably out of sync. It's got all sorts of problems today. Yeah, we got we got all, we got issues. I finally updated my Mac to Big Sur, and it's I don't think it's going well. I did that to my MacBook, and it's been running great. I gotta say. I mean, I'm not having too many problems with it. I've just I haven't really gone through and optimized everything I need to be optimized yet, and mm -hmm. I was afraid that this might happen to Discord. I uh. I, uh, I I had to wipe the whole thing because there was too much. Uh, I, my hard drive was full, even though I had like nothing on. I had like nothing on my MacBook, but for some reason the hard drive was full. Yeah. So I wiped it. I installed Big Sur, and there was like a hundred and eighty gigabytes being used by just other when I installed Big Sur. Oh yeah. So I had to do some wacky stuff in in disk utility to like delete that 180 gigabytes um yeah. now everything runs great i haven't tried like editing something in premiere yet but uh it seems to be okay and it's an it's a late 2016 macbook so there's rumors that there's uh we're gonna get the 16 inch m1s in the summer Ooh. so maybe i mean I I, I, I'm, I'm keeping my expectations low because i keep getting uh i, keep getting I, I assume they'll wait for the m2s to do that which might be this year given the way they do the you know the phone chips. Yeah, they yeah, uh, want the game processors. Yeah, I would think that they want it. I, well, suppose the rumor is it's also going to come out with a, like a, a new Mac Pro, so it'll probably okay. be something like an M2 or like an M1A yeah, yeah. or something. I don't know. Um. Anyway, uh, we can talk about we can talk about Valve now. Uh, yeah, let's talk about the actual thing. <laughs> So we uh in the headline. So apparently this this broke like just a few hours ago. Yeah. Apparently Valve well it was it was pitched as a rumor earlier today that Valve is making a uh, a a Nintendo Switch like portable gaming device and a device mm -hmm. similar to what we've seen these other like hokey companies have been making like these these like yeah. little gaming pcs that are tablets and they're usually expensive and they're little pcs and they look like a nightmare to use so i've yeah. never personally done a video on one because they're expensive and i know i'm not gonna like it um but anyway valve is making their own. Now there's an article from Ars Technica that says exclusive Valve is making a Switch-like portable gaming PC. So it's not a rumor anymore, apparently? I, I guess not. If Ars Technica says it, it must be true. It must be true. They don't mess around with stuff like this. No, they're a reputable uh, source. Video game and hardware studio Valve has been secretly building a Switch-like portable PC designed to run a large number of games on the Steam PC platform via Linux, and it could launch su supply chain willing by year's end. Multiple sources familiar with the matter have confirmed that the hardware has been in development for some time, and this week, Valve itself pointed to the device by slipping new hardware-related code into the latest version of Steam, the company's popular PC gaming storefront and ecosystem. On Tuesday, Steam DB operator Pavel Dejundik, got it, nailed it, first try, uh, spotted the change in Steam's code, which pointed to a new device named SteamPal. The name is a <laughs> derivative of a previously discovered co uh, code term, Neptune, which began appearing in September of last year and came with a Neptune-optimized games string. At the time, curious code crawlers thought it, this discovery referred to some type of controller. Typically, that's true. The SteamPal, whose name we're putting in scare quotes because we... Uh, because we do not have confirmation on the device's final name, 
is an all-in-one PC with gamepad controls and a touchscreen. In other words, it looks and functions like a Nintendo Switch, albeit with a removable Joy-Con controller functionality. There's a fly in my room. Got it. Killed it. I'm the man. Uh, <laughs> the, this device is very likely the subject of an announcement Valve co-founder Gabe Newell hinted at hinted to in a panel conversation at a New Zealand school earlier this month. There, he dodged a question about Valve's plans for future console video games with an indirect answer. We will get a better idea of we will get a better idea of that by the end of this year, and it won't be the answer you expect. You'll say, "Ah, now I get what he was talking about." Uh, in recent years, the Switch-like PC category has exploded. In early 2020, Alienware revealed its first Switch-like gaming PC, but the concept device has not yet turned into a commercial product. If you want to buy a similar device today, you're largely looking at products from Chinese OEMs like GDP, One Notebook, and Aya, who have slapped ultra-portable PC processors and parts onto Switch-like chassis. The Steam Pal will go a similar route with a system on a chip likely coming from either Intel, AMD, not NVIDIA. The aforementioned Switch-like PC manufacturers have leaned to AMD and Intel for their products. It is unclear whether Valve will release multiple SKUs uh, to offer customers a choice of power level, battery life, and other specs as other Switch-like PCs have offered over the past year. At least one Steam Pro at least one Steam Pal prototype version is quite is quite wide compared to the Nintendo Switch. This extra width accommodates a slew of control options. No Valve is likely not slapping an entire QWERTY keyboard onto the system, but the company has packed in a standard array of gamepad buttons and triggers, along with a pair of joysticks and at least one thumb-sized touchpad, in addition to the device's touchscreen, touch-sensitive screen. The, the Steam Pals trackpad is likely smaller than the pair of touchpads that came standard on every steam controller if you remember the steam controller and that weird looking thing the yes. steam pal is still in prototype stage and its features are subject to change as we've seen with prototype hardware for other valve initiatives like steam vr and the steam controller in other words while i'm pretty confident that the steam pal will include a d-pad i can't say for sure this also means i don't have details on crucial hardware aspects like battery life screen size pixel resolution memory and storage capacity Steam Pal's PC-like properties will include the option to dock to a larger monitor via its USB Type-C port, but I don't have firm details on exactly how that connection will work or whether Valve has any plans to eventually any plans for an eventual Steam Pal dock. Lastly, the Steam Pal was built with Linux as a likely target, an idea that aligns with Valve's continued push to make its entire catalog compatible with the open source OS, particularly through Steam uh, Steam Proton. This that in no way means Valve's increasingly cozy relationship with Microsoft couldn't result in a deal to get Windows onto the Steam Pal, though it could though it would not be surprising to see Valve skip the per device Windows license and tell users that the Steam Pal is open enough for them to customize like any other PC. Um that I didn't know it was Linux. That's kind of uh it's kinda it makes me uh a little skeptical of this thing. Yeah. Uh, I mean, this this article looks like it goes on to talk about Steam machines, which were Valve's attempt to get into making actual PCs. Steam machines, for those of you who don't know in the chat, those were basically Valve-branded PCs that were sort of like console hybrids in a way. They were already designed, they were already spec'd out, and you can just plug them into your TV and start playing any game on Steam. Um, and they ran on Steam OS, which was a Linux-based OS. Mm -hmm. Not every game on Steam ran on Linux, though. And it was very limited in what you could play, where you can get them. A lot of companies, actually, when they made Steam machines, they also made Windows versions of those same machines <laughs> so that you could you can do everything you can on a regular PC. And people just people probably opted for yeah. those. Um you can make toast with them too. Yes. You, you can. You can. Uh, you can uh, press your clothes with them too. It looks like. <laughs> um, Tech Nanner in the chat says they have uh, excellent. They have a fantastic track record with hardware. I think he's being sarcastic. <laughs> I, I think so too. What What has Valve made that was successful? 
<laughs> hardware wise i guess the the vive true but well they bought that from htc well htc still makes it uh, they that's in conjunction with htc oh so really that's like an htc thing that valve helped with other than that like nothing valve has ever done hardware wise has been you know runaway success or like any kind of success really okay so they did vr they got one so hey they maybe maybe that was the turning point for valve maybe since then they can now start making some good hardware maybe um yeah i have little f i mean so all right valve has great uh they have really good remote play so you you can from your android phone or whatever you can remote into your your pc and just and just mm -hmm. play whatever games you got on steam and it works really really well so this little device could probably be a powerhouse for that especially if it's linux based like you could still yeah. then remote into a computer or maybe even one of valve's own servers and remotely play a game that way and it'll probably run great but the biggest selling point for this thing would be if games run natively on it and if it's linux based yeah. i don't know what we're going to be doing yeah i don't know i don't know what the the ratio of games on steam that run on linux is i can't imagine it's very big because mm -hmm. you know every pc game runs on windows like for a fact less run on mac but still i think more games run on mac than they do linux at least on steam i'm not sure yeah i'm not sure how that works i i, I mean yeah. i know linux is like a development system like developers like linux for some reason um but no it's it's not worth it to develop for because nobody has yeah. it so um i mean i, I like see people in the people in the chat are saying that um steam steam proton which is their like uh windows emulation like works really well in steam os so proton maybe is a that, compatible maybe layer that's... of microsoft windows games to run on linux based operating systems proton is developed by valve in cooperation with developers from code weavers under con contract and based on a fork of wine so i know wine wine is that yeah program that lets you run windows games or windows applications on mac yeah uh it includes several patches and libraries to improve performance and compatibility with windows games proton is designed for integration into steam client as steam play okay so it's like it's wine for for linux that's pretty cool yeah um i mean you're 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 basically emulating windows games <laughs> like yeah. i i still don't like what is the benefit to putting linux oh i guess the the license you can make it cheaper because what's the benefit yeah. to putting linux on this device other than just having it run windows it sounds like everything would well, just run better if you put it on windows well you gotta remember linux is open source so that means you know it's free one yeah. two um it's easier to develop for because you don't have to go through microsoft for everything it's open so you can you know do what you want on it mm -hmm. um problem is not everybody has linux not everybody knows how to use linux right um i mean so uh i i don't mind having like uh uh a good user experience like layer like a good ui over mm -hmm. in operating system to make things easier to run so like I'd imagine Steam is going to put their own sort of uh, UI over this thing to make it so all your games are there, similar to like a Nintendo Switch or something, um, where you can just pick your game and open it up and it'll work just fine. Um, it, it doesn't matter what this thing runs on, as long as it's a good experience for the end user. As long as you turn it on and you can get to the game and everything runs just fine. So... If they can figure that out running Linux or whatever they're going to do using Proton, I'm totally down. Uh, yeah. I just don't, I, I, I don't, I'm keeping my expectations low for something like this. I, I, I like the idea that it has a touchpad because all of these other like Chinese devices that 
are you know like uh like nintendo switch knockoffs they yeah. don't have something like that to, yeah. th there's like no it, they're windows machines like they have start menus and and these like pictures are misleading because it looks like it has like a cool ui but it doesn't it's it's yeah. literally just windows it's just windows yeah uh and how do you move the mouse you use the thumbstick and that sucks um it's, yeah so i'd be I, i'm interested in in a navigation with with a touch with, with a yeah uh, freaking uh or i guess this thing these things have touch screens too but uh i'm I'm interested in like mouse movement with the touchpad it'd be cool if it was sort of like a vita how the vita had the back touchpad yeah but the back touchpad like really wasn't useful outside of like a handful of games <laughs> yeah <laughs> but i mean you're just using it to navigate with the mouse that's that's right it. Uh, is Luke real said, did you see the handheld PC would reviewed a week, a few weeks ago? Yes. I believe it was this, the, uh, Aya Neo. Um, I believe it was this one. I also saw, I think Linus tech tips did this one. Yeah. I think I yeah. saw that one. The, the one X player, which is ugly. This is, I mean, they're all pretty ugly. The GPD win actually. So GPD makes pretty good stuff. I've, I've had their like DS looking one. That was an Android tablet. This one looks pretty cool. It's like a, it's got like a sidekick looking yeah. thing. It's got a whole keyboard under the screen. Um, and it's it's kind of tiny. Um, I have zero use for any of this stuff. They're all expensive and 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 the, the user experience is going to be trash because it's all just it's windows with no skin over it yeah i know i saw some people bring it up in the chat uh steam does have what they call a big picture mode which right. is optimized for televisions mm -hmm. um so if they could take that and make a version of that for tablets i think they might be you know that might ease the pain of trying to play pc games on a handheld when you remote into your computer using steam or steam link um it automatically goes into big picture mode uh and it works great uh because yeah. you control it with a controller and it's it's perfect so you don't even have to use a mouse at all um so that's another thing I, i'm talking about how great the 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 mouse pad would be or like the trackpad would be but like mm -hmm. you shouldn't need that if it's a windows machine but I guess certain games would require a mouse. Like, it's not going to translate one-to-one -one onto a controller. Yeah. Um, I used to have... What's the... What's the... Was it called the Steam Link? The 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 little, like... The little oh, tiny thing? Oh, it was like thing? this... Like that? It was like that big? Yeah. Yeah, I think it was the Steam Link. And it was flat. Yeah, th yeah, that that thing uh, I used for like two seconds, and it was really cool, but like I had no use for it. It was only like twenty yeah. bucks, which is awesome. And yeah, it was because, well, that was around when Valve was like, it was at the end of its life cycle, and Valve was like just trying to liquidate it, and that's when we snacked it up. Mm -hmm. I thought it retailed for twenty bucks. Did it? I thought it was like super cheap, and that was part of the the appeal of it. It was basically just a way to remote into your computer, and, and no, and, it. It, the introductory price was 50 bucks oh that's eh. yeah it's just i just like it's cool that you can remote into your computer from your tv uh yeah. if you need that um i just don't think many people need that yeah because it is a little cumbersome to use in that way um but yeah, I snagged it for 20 bucks and it, it was... I thought it would... I used it for like two seconds. I was like, this is really cool. And then I never had to use for it. We were going to yeah. use it as a way to remote into the PC for when we were doing the podcast. Uh, and it was just too cumbersome to use in that way. Yeah. Um. So anyway, there's a lot of hurdles they need to get over. And a lot of them are user experience hurdles. Mm -hmm. Because... Uh, um. There's a lot that can go wrong with a device like this. And also, it could be a lot of money. I mean, if you're going to run oh, the yeah. games natively off of it, it's got to have a lot of power. Well, one that of the things that, St that uh, Steam machines did, they offered 
well, for, they licensed it to different companies. One, two, they offered different tiers. So like there was a a lightweight version for like a couple hundred bucks, and there was like a super version for like a thousand dollars or whatever, and it could run everything on Steam flawlessly. Um, so I'd imagine they'd do something like that. I wonder if that's one of the reasons they decided to go with Linux. Maybe they can get more power out of it, but then you're still emulating Windows on a lot unless of games, they so. can unless they can convert they make Linux based versions of games for like the majority of the games out there, like the most popular games. Yeah. Or they optimize the emulation for the most popular games. I, I froze. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Do you want to try using the web browser of discord? Uh, I can try. Give me a, second. while you do I'll... that, I'll, I'll read the notification. I think we're, we're done with, with Valve, yeah. right? Okay. Yeah, so I'll, I'll log out and then I'll log. All right, in. I'll read notifications while you do that. Um, right. anyway, uh, where am I? How you doing, everybody? Uh, we got a basic Dutch with four months. Thank you very much. We got Spoopy Girl with a hundo bits. Thank you. We got Khalil Jama. Thank you for the eight months. Will is a killer. LOL. Keep up the great work, guys. Thanks, dude. Uh, I'll let him know. Picky Gamer with four months. Thanks for all the great content, guys. Thank you, Picky Gamer. It's Taco Night. Thank you for gifting a sub to Wingless. And it's Taco Night. Thank you for gifting another sub. Um, unless they can make it a simple pick up and go experience, it will fail. Yeah, yeah. It's a it's a user experience thing. Will using the Steam link on his camera. <laughs> okay load Will, will's right. slowly coming back uh you are in four by three for some reason but uh that shouldn't matter uh life is terrible kids <laughs> uh i think it'll work your your bit rate's trash but i think it'll probably even out okay uh you are you are at least uh synced up now i'll take it <laughs> Hey Kobe. man, this Zack Snyder's Justice League is in four by three, and as we all know, that is the greatest thing to ever happen in the history well, of society. Well, well I'll, just put me in black and white, and that'll be even better. We're squares in and on. Like, <laughs> we're squares on the on the on this, so it doesn't matter. I know. Uh, Khalil Jama uh, says Will is a killer. By the way. I didn't hear. Did you respond? I didn't hear anything from your end. I said that's not a lie. Ah. Uh, and Migs Luna, what's up, Wolf Bros? My favorite podcast on Earth right now. Thank you for the hundo bits. Thank you. Uh, well, say something loud. Ah. Okay. Just making sure you're still the same volume. Um. All right. What else shall we talk about today, Will? Uh, we can talk uh, about the Sonic news. Yes, we got you. You are a little. You sound you. a little quiet to me. Do I? Yeah. Does he sound quiet to you, people? Compared to me? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. He is quiet. Uh, are you using the right okay. mic, or or should I just raise you? Yeah. Tap uh, it. Yes. Okay. I'm going to. I'm just going to raise you on my end. Speak. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, I'll lower you again. Wait. What about now? What about now? How's that? Is that yeah. working? Uh, it's working. Okay. Say just a few words. Sure. Hi, this is me talking. I am talking. This is what I sound like when I'm going to. I'm going to raise everybody. You. What's? Okay. I raise. I raise you a little bit anyway. Um. Okay. Well, you're loud at AF anyway, so everyone is is mute in comparison. True, Eric. That's a good point. Uh, anyway, Sonic 2's plot has been revealed. Sonic 2, as in the movie, not the game. The we movie. knew that plot for yes. for a long time. Yes, uh, Sonic the Hedgehog fans have been waiting uh, with bated breath to discover what happens next for the, in the tale of Sonic. The first film released in 2020 was a family-friendly romp that mostly took place in familiar settings around America. 
a government copyright listing has the synopsis for the second movie, and it sounds a little more faithful to the games. After settling in Green Hill, this is the synopsis. Uh, after settling in Green Hills, Sonic is ready for more freedom, and Tom and Maddie agree to leave him home while they go on vacation. But no sooner are they gone when Dr. Robotnik comes back, and this time with a new partner, Knuckles, in search for an emerald that has the power to both build and destroy civilizations. Sonic teams up with his own sidekick, Tails, and together they embark on a journey to find the emerald before it falls into the wrong hand. Uh, so basically, it's Sonic 3. <laughs> yes. The... the the plot that they should have gone with the first time around <laughs> is now the plot of the second movie. Right, which is fine. You know what? They're going to introduce Tails and Knuckles. I'm cool with that. That's pretty cool. Knuckles yeah, is like the bad yeah. guy, and we know he'll be reformed at the end. We also saw pictures of yeah, Sonic, and Tails, and Knuckles together. So, Yeah. Uh, this listing has been active for over a month, uh, but was only recently discovered by Twitter user, user, user. Ninja Risu. Yuza Ninja Risu. So, 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 so what, um, does uh, Robotnik have a name when he's tricking Knuckles? Like when he's got the glasses on and everything? No, I think, you know, like, like, because my... when you're playing Sonic 3, you fight Eggman in all of his forms, but he's in a disguise. So he's tricking Knuckles into thinking like oh, this we... is the bad guy. Yeah, that's in that's an egg robo. Oh, so that, it's not when you play as when you play Sonic Three and Knuckles as Knuckles, you fight an egg robo instead of Eggman. Oh, so it's not actually Eggman. Right, but at, then at the end you realize that it's been Eggman this whole time. Right. Right. Okay. Okay. I understand. Mm -hmm. Um. Mings Luna says, uh, upgrade Will's equipment, man. Will, what do you need? What do you need? You, do you need anything? Uh, well, I, I have been debating whether or not to get a new computer. All right, well, but that's... Uh, that's. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> so... My point is, there's so you got so much shit over there, and it's all great. Yeah, I sh there should be no problems. <laughs> yeah, I think... I need to figure things out on my end. I don't think it's a it's a hardware issue or even a software issue. I think I think it's things beyond our control. Dude, I have to, I have a, a freaking great setup here, and I the yeah. stream was crashing like six times a podcast, and all I had to do was use a VPN. So like that, like yeah. throwing money at Will isn't gonna fix his setup. Is what I'm trying. Maybe you should use a VPN. I could, I, you know, part of the reason why I updated to Big Sur was because PIA just didn't work anymore unless I updated. Is that the VPN? That's the VPN I use, yeah. Ah, very cool. Yeah. Anyway, uh, the first, oh, wait, this is spoilers for the first movie. Can't talk about that. <laughs> Everybody's seen the first movie by anyway, now. We know Tales is going to be the second Prime. movie. Um, yeah. We liked the first movie as Sonic fans. We th we thought that the movie wasn't a good movie, <laughs> but we enjoyed it. It was as a Sonic lot better fans. than I think we. I, it was definitely a lot better than we thought it was going to be. Yes, you know, for sure. I think I maybe expected too much of it. Um, that said, this sounds exactly like what I think the first movie should have been. So I'm more excited for this than I was for the first one. This is exactly what I was hoping the second movie would be after the first movie. Because the first movie was a great yeah. setup for something like this to happen. So I'm so down. And I hope the third yeah, movie has I, Shadow in it. That would be sick. <laughs> I feel like, you know, I still feel like Sonic didn't need all that setup, you know? Because right. you, could, you could introduce Sonic and Tails and Robotnik and Knuckles and all these other characters without having to go through the rigmarole of sending Sonic to earth and introducing him to Cyclops and his girlfriend as they go around hanging out in bars and shit. Well, well that's that. That's one thing. I'm glad that the movie didn't give him like a big origin story. They get, they get, they spent like no time on a Sonic origin story because there doesn't need to be one. It's the other characters that they have to introduce 
that uh oh well, they i think is okay the whole, like the first like 20 minutes of the movie it was like him on his world and then like as a kid being looked over by big claw who we never see again mm-hmm. and then he gets sent to earth and then it's like him living on earth alone for 15 years mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um so we didn't need any of that Well, yeah, I that's just like their own made up like story. That's just like their own version yeah. of Sonic, you know. I'm I'm happier that they didn't go with like uh, how Sonic became Sonic because we don't need to know that. That's not yeah. important to us. Um, and I understand why they would need to slowly introduce Tails and Knuckles now. Um, and Tails kind of just appears. So, like, and I hope that that's how it is. I hope it is when, when yeah. uh, the second movie starts, Son- uh, Tails is just there and no explanation. Hey, we've been friends this whole time. Let's start. Let's have an adventure together. Yeah. Um, Metascension says America will not tolerate a black hedgehog with a gun in 2021. Jesus Christ. I thought that was well, a that was a funny Shadow the Hedgehog joke until I just read it right now. <laughs> that is well, too. Who was it? Because Lubick asked, too real. "When is the film adaptation of the hit GameCube game Shadow the Hedgehog coming?" There we go. Um, I think that was in response to that. That'll be the third movie. Yeah. Uh. Anyway, I'm um, so uh, we. I, I so i we again we liked the first movie we were just and we saw it like oh what like a week or two early a week and, or two before yeah and we thought it was we thought it was good but we were like as, it ter- as a movie it's not like a, a cinema masterpiece people aren't gonna like it that yeah. much but it, I, it was it was that definitely is was not and is not you know the one video game movie to transcend and due to the, to the genre what superman did for comic book movies still not there yet yeah and then the movie came out and everybody universally loved it <laughs> yeah and i was like shocked i was like oh, okay well I'm, I'm happy everybody got something out of it I'm, I'm still convinced that um whatever the first few reviews are of a, of a movie or game or whatever everyone just just hive minds and rolls with it like almost almost no matter what I think it's definitely a lot of like, yeah, riding high on the fact that you saw it early and the studio was allowing you to like tweet that you saw it early. No, no, no. I think no, a no. lot of times we, we, we didn't care. We, we, we were, we were like, we, we like gave it, uh, uh, we were very middle of the road on it. Well, I, my thing is most of the time when I see like a movie, like mostly in movies, when early reviews come out and early reactions, I should say, because they're only allowed to tweet the reactions. The only one, the only people who tweet are people who like the movie in some capacity. The people who don't usually don't say anything until they put out their review. Mm-hmm. And I think what happens is those good, re- those good reviews, those good reactions on Twitter linger maybe too long. <laughs> so that by the time the movie comes out, People have the wrong impression of it. They may have the wrong impression of it, and they're confused as to why so many other people don't like it. That happens that a lot with, with the DC movies. Oh, uh, yeah. They always get really favorable reviews at first, and then the movies come out, and mm-hmm. everybody hates it. Um, anyway, I, I have high expectations for this because uh, as a Sonic fan, I like where they're going with it i think this is going to be the movie yeah. i wish the first one was but um this is the definitely the movie i was hoping they were going to go with the second one uh after watching the first yeah. one uh surge says dude sonic would have passed as a mad movie if it wasn't for the radical change in the looks after the backlash of the first trailer that's also true we're leaving that whole part out that is also uh, true <laughs> sonic looked horrible uh and then everybody looked, said this looks, looks like horrible satan monster <laughs> and they changed the look of sonic and i think that yeah. that definitely helped oh 100 percent helped um it's my understanding that the movie as a whole wasn't changed 
aside from Sonic's redesign. Yeah. So, but I mean, that redesign is just so, that original design is so off-putting and uh, gross. Uh, it's like, it's like the, when Michael Bay did the Ninja Turtles movies, which were also <laughs> Paramount pictures. Oh, like the, those movies could have been masterpieces, but the designs of the turtles were so off-putting and gross that you could not get past that. Those movies were not masterpieces either. They were, they were garbage fires. <laughs> I'll, I'll. What was I going to say? Um, so, so Sonic, most of his popularity is his character design. He's a great character design, and all of the characters are great character designs. And you can have a yeah. lot of fun with it. You can make very similar characters in your own little, uh, your own little uh, OCs. Um, that's why a lot of the bad Sonic games still sell really good because it's it's just it's just really cool and pretty to look at. So they ruined the one thing that made Sonic iconic. <laughs> So yeah, they had to change that. Otherwise, it wouldn't have been a good movie. Yeah. Uh, Man of Steel says Detective Pikachu was a disgrace. Detective Pikachu was awesome. De uh, people in the chat, somebody else in the chat said Detective Pikachu was better than Sonic, and I agree by a little bit. I think Detec yes, Detective no, Pikachu was a better movie. Much better movie. Uh, not that's not to say Sonic was bad. I think Sonic was good. Um. Anyway, more Sonic news. More Sonic news. Sonic the Hedgehog celebrates his 30th birthday this year. I am old. And a new <laughs> digital showcase is coming Thursday, May 27th, with the reveal of the future of Sega's enduring mascot, Sonic Central. Described as a virtual event focused on the famous hedgehog, will feature appearances from Sonic from Sega's Sonic team and an unannounced special guest. Um, in in a news release Tuesday, Sega promised to reveal a plethora of upcoming projects, partnerships, and and events spanning the Sonic the Hedgehog franchise and beyond during the live stream. Sonic Central will stream for at 12 p.m. Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific on May 27th on the official Sonic the Hedgehog YouTube and Twitch channels. Sonic's most recent game releases were a pair of spin-offs in the form of 2019 Sonic and Mario at the Olympic Games Tokyo 2020 and Sonic Team Racing. The Blue, the blue Blur's most recent core games, the 3D platformer Sonic Forces and the 2D platformer Sonic Mania were released back in 2017. Sega has a sequel to a Sonic the Hedgehog movie set for release uh, April 8th, 2022. Birthday weekend for Will. A handful <laughs> of rumored collections and remasters, including a re-release of the Wii game Sonic Covers, Sonic Colors, uh, have leaked via retail listings. To further celebrate Sonic's anniversary, Sega collaborated with creative agency Liquid Plus Arcade for a new unstoppable promotional campaign that highlights uh, fans' long relationship with the Sega Genesis era mascot. You can see Sonic's new nostalgia-tinged video below. Have you seen this video? I have, and I thought it was bad until it, it, they... It's until they got to the part with the uh, uh, this little girl drawing the Sonic stuff, and then they oh yeah, and then they show like the act one of the actual Sonic comic book artists, and I was like, oh okay, it's yeah. like it's like actually her, <laughs> and I was like, oh, that's pretty yeah. sick. The rest yeah. of it seems uh, like a bad attempt to do what um, Pokemon did. Pokemon had a really cool like nostalgia filled like trailer. Um, it's such a bizarre, like, motivational trailer. Yeah. Like, you get knocked down, you, you get back up again. He, who was there with you this whole time? You were there for him. Like, <laughs> oh, God, Sonic is not that serious, dude. Yeah. <laughs> but Sonic I mean, is, like, not that serious. They have to recognize that um, they haven't. I feel like Sega has done almost nothing for their own franchise, and the fans have done everything for them. They've made it so oh. easy to have this franchise, and Sega has yeah. almost been a detriment to themselves. I feel, oh God, because yeah, because in the past, like in the in the past, like twenty years of Sonic, the only like two games that sonic team were able to make and do well were colors and generations outside of that you had you know 
the, the, the stupid storybook games. You had Sonic 06. You had Forces. You have Lost Planet. You have Unleashed, which is half a good game and half a bad game. That makes it a bad game. Yes. Everything else <laughs> Sonic related, yeah, was really like not connected to Sega for the most part. Mar Marthew brings up a good point. How does Sonic still have fans if it's been so trash? It's because of the iconic character design and also because the community is so uh, so good. People stay in it. Also, and I will fight anybody who disagrees with me, those first four games are great games. Yes. They were good games. They were good at the time. And they're still good now. You don't have a franchise that lasts for 30 years if your original uh concept if your original output is trash do you think star trek would have lasted all this time like if the original series was trash no it had trash episodes but the series as a whole was very good and it survived after it got canceled in in the late 60s it survived a decade of no star trek all the way up until the 80s when they rebooted it for the movie franchise and it still continues to this day would they have done it if the show was bad no the original sonic games were great games so it endures uh despite sweet the shit sweet potato moose says unleashed is better on series x i think because it runs at a steady 120 frames per second that's pretty cool and i'd like to try that out <laughs> i don't think that makes it a, i don't think that makes it good the I high frame forget. rate isn't gonna make a garbage game good <laughs> The high frame rate is not going to remove all the Werehog stages from the game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just going to make the Werehog stages faster. Yeah. Um. So anyway, we're here because we're talking about they're doing an announcement on on Thursday. Um, yes. We don't know what's going to be in it at all. It just says a plethora of upcoming projects, partnerships, and events spanning the Sonic the Hedgehog franchise and beyond. Uh, I'd imagine there's not going to be much about the movie. Um, no, it'll probably... I mean, the special guests will probably be uh, Ben Schwartz and whoever is going to voice Knuckles and Tails. Yeah, we might get a we'll Knuckles design. Guest. We might get a Knuckles yeah. design reveal. Um, or like a poster or something. Uh, which would be pretty cool. I think we're going to get a big AAA game. I think we're going to get the big main Sonic oh, game. Yeah. Uh, and that's going to be pretty cool. I really hope yeah. it's... I really hope that... The, I mean, like, I know this trailer's lame, but I really hope that they channel this and uh, and reach back into the past and pull out something good, like they did with Mania. Yeah. Because uh, they keep trying to, to, to force themselves forward and we get garbage like Sonic Forces and... Uh, what else? What other trash have we had recently? What came out before Sonic Forces? Sonic Lost Worlds. Yeah. That was that that's a weird game though. I don't know even know if I count that. I know it's like a mainline series, but I don't know if I count that. That game was actually okay. <laughs> that yeah, it was okay, but it was very weird. Yeah. I mean, it was like their take on Galaxy. <laughs> yeah. Um Which, Oh, Sonic, Sonic Boom didn't run by default. Sonic oh, Boom right, was Sonic very Boom. bad. Sonic Boom was very bad. Very very bad. <laughs> uh on all platforms. Sonic Team Racing doesn't count. But Sonic Team Racing is very good. It's okay. I just play Mario Kart. I'm sick of all of these games that are like that that are like uh, uh, like spiritual successors or ripoffs of other AAA games. Like, just play the good one. You don't have to play the ones that are like kind of <laughs> like it. I mean, I get it, but like. <laughs> I also like, don't no, like, really like friend, Mario Kart that if much. If my friends come over, my friends come over, like, we're going to play Mario Kart. We're not going to play Team mm -hmm. Sonic Racing or mm -hmm. Crash. Right. Definitely not going to play Crash Team Racing. But. <laughs> crash Team Racing. Crash Team Racing. Ha! <laughs> Plebeian <laughs> crap. But, like, you know, if I'm, you know, I got some time to kill, I don't mind messing around in Team Sonic Racing. It's fun. It's good. It's well designed. I'm I can not. rec I I can recognize the goodness in it. I can just I just know. Yeah, there's something a little bit better. I'm not here to say which one's best between all the kart racers because I I don't even freaking like Mario Kart that much. I just know 
that those games are for playing with your friends when they come over for like a party or something because they're very, they're very normy games and the one that yeah. you're gonna pick out of all of them is mario kart because it's the one that everybody knows so in in my little little world mario karts fill in that void that these all have these all these all go in the I same void and mario kart fills it just fine the the only game that i've played like the only mario kart style game that i've played that comes closest to that is Diddy Kong Racing, which is another Nintendo exclusive kart racing game. Um. Anyway, I hope we get. Maybe we'll get. Maybe we'll get another two D platformer like Sonic Mania type deal. I I hope that they let the Sonic Mania people just do a big budget thing. That's what I hope. I see. I. I feel like the Sonic Mania team special tease is in 2D. So it would make yeah. sense for them to stick with that and do like a Mania 2, hopefully with more original levels and not a whole lot of like retreads of previous levels. True. Um I will I will I would be down for a colors remaster. I predicted as such or I demanded on Twitter, whatever you want to call it. Oh, and there were um, rumors, yeah, that that was going to happen. Yeah. Um, there's also the rumor of the of a new Sonic collection that'll include Sonic Three and Knuckles for the first time in a decade. Um, Ooh, oh yeah, yeah. I, we, we did hear about that last week. <laughs> I think they should do a new big budget AAA 3D Sonic game. I think they should. Mm-hmm. Do not include classic Sonic in the game at all. <laughs> Just make it modern Sonic. Do not do some weird story where it's like a dark apocalyptic future and Robotnik takes over and you don't commit to it the entire game. Um, yeah, and Sonic's in jail do, and being tortured or something. <laughs> yeah. So the game do starts. Not do, do not do an original character, like create a character thing. Just don't. Even though it makes all the sense in the world with the series, just don't. Well, well just, here's the thing. Those are like the uh, the original character thing is a good idea executed horribly so like like they just have to be better at making the fucking game like like the yeah, I, it's, it's why... the e- i feel like sonic it's the easiest thing in the world to sell games you just have to <laughs> pander to the freaking fans who do all of the work for you and That's they why and, and they tried and on... they and they fucked it up that's why I say don't focus on create a character and all that stuff. Just like take a step back and like focus on making a Sonic game. Don't try mm-hmm. to add any bullshit to it. That's what they did with Colors, and it was brilliant. It worked great. They just made a Sonic game. They had like you know X amount of levels that were just running fast and jumping over things, and that was it. And the levels didn't last like two minutes. They actually had length to them. I want to make it very clear that we're very big Sonic fans. Before we before we, before we get crap for or die. shitting all over Sonic, I want you to know that we're very big Sonic fans. Yeah. We've just been burned was for that, many years. We were there for the original uh, Super Nintendo Genesis console war. We were veterans yeah. of that war. We're veterans Don't of the war. Tell me, and, and we were on the Sonic Sega fans. side, dude. We were we yeah. We were ride or die Sonic. We didn't jump on until Sonic Two, though. We were a little late to Sonic. We tried. Our our parents were difficult. To- when it came to video games you have you Still have are. a sega no that's nintendo it's 8-bit <laughs> dumbass it's nintendo you bought it before we were born <laughs> um anyway uh there's other thing. well there's other things happening on thursday also at the same time as the well not at the same time but on the same day seems like Sony just couldn't let them have their 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 fun. They they, they said Sonic yeah. is having an announcement on Thursday. Too bad. We're going to talk about Horizon Zero uh, Forbidden West. Sorry. For yeah. for a whole state of play. PlayStation state of play, honestly, they've been trash the last couple of them. The last one was uh what was it? Ratchet? It was Ratchet and Clank which Ratchet we knew, Clank which one? we knew about. Um, they, Subnautica they, like, two, and like the thing, yeah. Subnautica two, which I also think we knew about, and Among Us for PlayStation five. Uh, uh, like cool, yeah. I can play it on my phone. Um, and that was it. 
<laughs> so these state of plays haven't been great. Everybody's really excited for Horizon Forbidden West. Everybody loved Horizon Zero Dawn. Yeah. So I'm sure this will have some good stuff in it. Oh, the Sonic stream starts at 9 a.m. Pacific. And this, the countdown starts at 9 a.m. Pacific. Mm. The actual gameplay reveal starts at 2 p.m. Pacific. Okay, well, that's good. That's good. It gives yeah. us a lot of time. Yeah. Uh, I will say though, I do like I do like the way they do the countdowns for for State of Play because it'll show uh, gameplay trailers of other upcoming Sony games to like get you excited for what they're going to show. I did not know they do. That's that. cool. Yeah, I, that's what they did for the last one. Um, well, I'm going to leave the call for a minute and join back because you have like a popping okay. sound that I think I can get rid of. Uh, sure. but in the meantime, I'm gonna read some notifications. Like we got, mm, did I read that one? I read that one. Mecha Dragon with a hundred. Oh, this is a great call experience. I have to say. Uh, hey, I'm back. Will. Uh, we got Mecha Dragon with a hundred bits. What up, my bros? Glad to see you guys podcasting as always. Speaking of Sonic, Sonic looks harder to draw than I thought. Please send help. He is not hard at all. He's not. Um, I used to draw him all the time when I was in elementary school. Probably I could still draw him. Classic style, though. I don't do green eye Sonic. Where's my pen? I'm gonna I'm gonna draw him on this bill right now. Will, uh, could you read the next notification? Uh, where was it? Where Where are we? Uh, okay, here we go. Uh, Kiko Ba resubbed uh, for 18 months. Uh, Toe Jam and Earl, most popular franchise. Come at me, you hear? Yeah, I don't know about that one. <laughs> uh, I like your moxie. You're on your own with that. Uh, Migs Luna with 100 bits. In my humble opinion, the best Sonic story was the one of the original Sonic the Hedgehog Saturday morning cartoon from the 90s. Cheers. Uh, yeah, also known as Sonic Sat AM because it ran on Saturday mornings. Uh, very good. Canceled after two seasons, which was a shame because they had a really good idea for season three. Part that cartoon kind of holds up. Kind of. <laughs> Have it on DVD. Trust me, kind of holds up. Also, Man of Steel Double uh, Yes. Um, the 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 movie, the 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 '90s movie, the 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 OVA. Oh yeah, yeah, the OVA. Yeah. It's all on uh on YouTube, and it's actually very good. I'm not drawing the body. There you go. You got it. You got. You got a Sonic there. Fo follow oh, along at home, kids. Oh. That's better than what I got going on right now. I already had to use the eraser. Well, mom wanted me to draw a, a paint a painting for her. You know, for for, for her little yeah, Florida yeah. condo. Uh, and I did it for Mother's Day. Uh, yeah. She wanted like a beach scene. I drew the beach from the opening of Sonic, uh, the 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 movie. Oh, I got to I got to see that. <laughs> I I I had a little uh it, it, in the distance there's a little tornado with like smoke coming out the back and you see yeah. it, like a like a vague little sonic and tails that she will never know that she'll never know is there. <laughs> I can't I can't wait to see that. Uh where are we? Mix um, Moon with another yeah. 100. Uh in my humble opinion, wait, did I read that already? Yeah, we yeah, read that already. I read that one. Uh Man of Steel 007 is the one we're up to. Uh, with 100 bits, I was l liking Detective Pikachu till I realized that people were fusing with Pokemon and to reverse Ryan Reynolds, he needed his son, but the whole rest of the city, he just does it instantly. What? So here's the thing. I thought that was weird too. That was a very weird uh, concept for, for the movie to be fusing with Pokemon. Apparently, that's the concept of the game Detective Pikachu. So... Yeah, that's that's what I've been told. So I'm actually okay with that. <laughs> if they were that true to the game, then fine. Um All right, we're all we're all caught up. Um I think we did fix the popping sound, by the way. I think I think we right. we're good. Will, real quick, I want to talk about Knockout City. Oh, yeah, how were you playing that? You were playing that. How was it? So Knockout City is that game that has that garbage trailer. I forgot where we yeah, saw it. Yeah, it's like a weird... 
Uh, no, we, I think we first saw it at one of the Nintendo Directs, and then it was in a state of play. It was a weird, like, dodgeball-style game with Fortnite aesthetics and things like that. And it was just, it just looked like marketing speak for cool modern gamers stuff. <laughs> Yeah, so the trailer has all these weird characters. Like, there's a little cute little pixel princess. There's the CSGO guy. There's, like, an orc. Yeah. And it's all there's different like a, game genres. Yeah. And you don't know what the game is. And you're like, oh, look at all this. Is, this is interesting. And, and it's got this weird, these like, it has the Fortnite font and the purple and everything. Um, so it, 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 it's, the trailer's weird. And then you get to the gameplay and it's a dodgeball game. And it's like, yo. Yeah. What? Yeah, none of those characters are involved at all. It's it's Yeah. Well, there's the princess girl, but she's not a pixel thing. She's yeah. an Which actual character. Cool. Yeah. It, I wasn't about it. That that, that it painted a terrible picture. I, I was like it like disappointed me <laughs> like when I saw the dodgeball. Mm -hmm. And it looked like some free to play garbage. Um it's made by EA, so it made it even worse. I was completely uninterested. Then I saw some gameplay. I have to admit, I watched a uh, sponsored stream. I think it was uh, Nick Merckx and Tim the Tabman. I watched like two seconds of them, and they were having a lot of fun. Yeah. And I was like, all right, that might actually be fun. Then I saw Alex. Uh, uh, now he, he's our friend, and now he's a video editor for uh, Game Informer. He tweeted oh, yes. like a video of him playing, and he's like, yo, this game is actually sick. And I was like, you know what? It's free for 10 days. I think it's I think today might be the last free day. Hmm. Um and uh he, it's it looked like it was really good and I was like, "You know what? I'll give it a shot." So I decided to get a crew together and will it's fucking sick. <laughs> it's actually oh, wow. awesome. Yeah. Um it's only free for oh, their chat saying 5 more days. So give it a shot. That means right. it's free on the Switch right now. Um it's cross play. Uh, so you can have it on any console. I think mm -hmm. it's going to be on Game Pass. So I also downloaded it on Xbox because I'll instead of I'm not paying for this game. Uh, right. I will play it on Game Pass and I'll play it on my Xbox. I'd rather play it on my Xbox anyway. Um, so it's three versus three. If you get a team with a bunch of people, that makes it the best because you know otherwise I can't imagine having fun with this game. But um, the way it works is. You throw the ball and you hit somebody. Everybody got, gets two hits. Um, you could also catch the ball. That doesn't really do anything. You just It just kind of like blocks the shot. And now you have the ball. Um, you can fake them out, though. You can fake a throw. So people will try to catch it. It's like shielding in a fighting game. You okay. shield... And then you have like a cooldown, so you can fake, you can pump fake, and then and then when they shield, you can throw the ball and it'll it'll hit them when they when they unshield. Uh, Tech Matters says rock paper scissors, yes. So it, it has a lot of fighting game elements to it. Um, there's like a dash, you can like dash around. Dashing also blocks a ball. Um, you can dash into people and they'll knock, they'll f drop the ball. Um, you can spin and and it'll spin the ball like it'll curve it. Um, you can charge the ball. You can turn into a ball yourself for another teammate to throw. There's a lot to it, but at the at the core of it, it's really just rock paper scissors. Um, but if you get a crew of like three people, that makes it really fun. Uh, I can't imagine it being fun playing solo. <laughs> yeah. Um, if you just go into an online match on your own <laughs> yeah there is voice chat uh i don't want to talk to other people though uh if you're with a random team it is awful if peeps don't get on the same page yeah i could imagine you probably but that's the that's the way it is with any team-based game like i'm terrified to play valorant because i just don't want to talk to any other people i i yeah. want i want a full team of people or i'm not playing the game um but getting two other friends together can't be too hard uh, I encourage you to play while it's free so that you can see if you want to keep playing when it's not free anymore. Uh, you can play it on the Switch. Um, there's a there's a 1v1 mode, but I think you have to unlock it. Uh, but it's easy. It, it, you level up really quickly. I think the most fun we had was 
just being tryhards at the game because it's such a stupid game to be a tryhard for. And yeah. there's a ranked mode. So like it's it's a really like silly game to to want to like like be uh like 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 top tier at. Um but it's fun. And we put a video over on Wolf Den Clips today of of us playing it. So if you want you watch that and then if see if you want to download it yourself. Uh Bob goes into detail on the gameplay mechanics. Me. Ah, so it's dodgeball. Yes. But in dodgeball, <laughs> if you like catch the ball, yeah, doesn't basically. the other guy go at, isn't the other guy out? Uh yes. At least that's how we I used to I believe that ball. is the official rules of dodgeball. Yeah. Um yeah, that's not how that works here. You just you just get the ball now. Uh feel like Splatoon meets Fortnite. That's what it looks like. That's not really what it is, though. I don't think so. I mean, you could turn into a ball, so I guess that's kind of like turning into a squid, but it doesn't really help your mobility at all. No. Um, the tra the training is terrible, but honestly, we had two people just join our game and uh -huh. without the training at all, and they did just fine. <laughs> so, um, there's a lot to it. Like every button does something, but uh, it's once you figure it out it's 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 really fun you could do a lot with it um anyway check it out that sounds it, it, that it sounds it, like good I, I am seeing a lot of like positive reaction to this game which i'm very surprised by because this I easily know. could have been another like fortnite try hard it's it's or you mean like fortnite clone that ended up failing miserably <laughs> Yeah, that's what I mean. Because it, not even a clone, because it's a dodgeball game, but like it's mm -hmm. trying to ape that style and aesthetic so hard. Well, we had like it's like it's trying to be the next thing. It reminds me of like Ninjala, which was very bad. I did not like that game at all. Yeah. Um, what's another one? I don't know. There's a lot of games like that 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 try really hard to 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 be the yeah. next cool multiplayer thing, and it just falls flat on its face. Um, when it's not free, how much will it be? Honestly, I don't. No. I believe it's going to be on Game Pass, so get it on there. Uh, it's going to be twenty dollars. It looks like. Okay. Um. So it's not. That's that's not a lot of money. And I'd imagine there's going to be microtransactions because there's a lot you can unlock in the game, and it's yeah. EA. So. Uh. Anyway, uh, we can move on from that. I just wanted to let everybody know right. that uh, despite the terrible trailer, it actually is pretty good uh, if you can get a crew together. <laughs> and you only need two people. That's, so. that's good to hear. Um, anyway, oh, how about this? A kid at heart says, Brother Wolf, does your bed also fall down from the wall? If so, does your wife dislike it? <laughs> no, it does not. Uh, we got one of them Ikea beds with drawers on the bottom. Because ah. uh, storage space is important, kids. Mm -hmm. Got to make sure you have enough space to store your stuff. Including your bed. Um, Including your bed. <laughs> the Legend of Zelda fans aren't happy about the new Skyward Sword Amiibo. What? Oh, I know uh, this. So, yeah, so last week it was revealed. Uh, actually, while we were doing Wolf Den Podcast, we didn't really talk about it. Uh, but Nintendo announced they would be releasing a new Amiibo to tie in with the upcoming Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword HD. This is a pretty common thing for Nintendo to do. However, rather than simply being excited about the prospect of adding a new Amiibo to their ongoing collections, many fans were rather unhappy with this. The source of the, discon of the discontent with the new Skyward Sword Amiibo stems from a few different things. For starters, the Amiibo itself, which features Zelda and a Loftwing creature from the game, is more expensive than normal. Typically, Amiibo... Uh, costs around $15, $16. Instead, this Amiibo will retail for nearly $10 more and will set customers back $25. As for why it is more expensive, Nintendo has seemed to justify the cost by noting that it contains two figures on a single base rather than one. While some Amiibo collectors are used to paying higher prices like this from time to time, it doesn't seem to be a good purpose for raising the value in this instance. The bigger reason why fans are unhappy comes from how the Amiibo itself can be used in-game. 
Essentially, Nintendo has added a new fast travel system to Skyward Sword HD that will allow players to get around the game's world much easier thanks to the ami thanks to said amiibo. Rather than needing to find a statue within the world, which is what you had to do in the original Skyward Sword to travel about, using this amiibo will allow you to immediately return to the sky and vice versa. It is a feature that many fans felt should have been, have naturally been in the game. Instead, Nintendo is essentially locking its inclusion behind an artificial paywall. Since first being revealed a few days ago, fans have slowly been voicing their displeasure about the decision on social media. While Nintendo has been known to do troublesome things like this in the past, many fans have been more boisterous than normal about how this is a simply a bad move. Although nothing is likely going to change in the situation, it does sound like Nintendo has generated some bad PR with, uh, for itself with this practice. Skyward Sword HD and the Amiibo are scheduled to release on July 16th. The, I've seen Amiibos this big. How much is this Amiibo? 25 bucks? 25 bucks. I've seen Amiibos bigger than this for less. So that's, yeah. that's, uh, that's stupid. But I guess it's Zelda people would pay for it. Also, um, a lot of the Zelda Amiibos are very rare and, and like catch a yeah. lot of money on the aftermarket. Like the Zelda uh, 30th anniversary ones, I think, go for like a lot of money. Yeah. Um, I just looked at the Monster Hunter Amiibos because I know those are very big. Uh, dude, Monster Hunter Stories, Leolia and mm -hmm. Chevel. One thousand and fifty dollars on eBay. Jesus what Christ. the f flip? That is crazy. Um, that's a buy it now situation. Yeah. Uh, I guess I guess you can't get any of these amiibos anymore. I guess they're they're hard to find now. Yeah. Um. Anyway. Uh, yeah, it is dumb that they got to lock this behind a paywall. That's, I mean, we had some, like, you know, the, um, the stupid, uh, Super Mario Odyssey amiibos, each one had a different thing that it did. Like, uh, the Princess Peach one just gave you, um, was it invincibility? No, it gave you, it gave you the, yeah. the, the, something like that. Yeah. One of them gave you the, th the three extra hearts and one of them just straight up gave you invulnerability. Um, yeah. So that was kind of like cheating. You, you could literally I know just do whatever you wanted. You could just spam it if you wanted. In Breath of the Wild, you could, if you scan a Link Amiibo, it, opponent spawns. So right. So you can get around the world faster. That's pretty... I mean, most, most open world games, you press up on the D-pad, you can whistle for your horse. It's built into the game. <laughs> so... so it um, uh, There's a lot of Amiibos that will make... Uh, playing the game a little easier that'll that, they'll they basically cheat codes it's like there's a lot of amiibos yeah. that are basically cheat codes already this seems a little different it's like unlocking a functionality of the of the of the yeah of the hd remaster that should have probably been there already yeah and the the hd remaster is already like people are already upset that it's a full price game mm -hmm. um instead of like being a little cheaper because it is like essentially a port um but now you're asking him to pay an additional $25 to unlock the whole game, basically. For sale is for false reporting. I said it was the buy it now price. Do I have to explain that buy it now is not like the, the you know, that's just what somebody wants for it. It's not necessarily like what yeah. it's being sold for. Do I have to explain that? You also that? know how eBay works. Um. Anyway, anybody got a thousand fifty dollars I could borrow? <laughs> <laughs> um. So yeah, this is weird. This is a weird. Uh, this is a weird thing for Nintendo to do. Uh, yeah, it's one thing to make the amiibo cost a lot of money. It's another thing to to lock a functionality behind it. Um, is this yeah. the only amiibo for the game? I think so. I mean, I'm sure you can use other Zelda amiibos in the game. I don't know what they do. I thought that but they as were far other as I amiibo. know. No, I guess that's. I don't it. know. I guess. Chat, that's, help us out. That's the only amiibo that I see. 
I didn't know that. I thought they would have multiple. Interesting. Um, uh, when did this game come out? Uh, July 16th, I believe. I don't think I'm going to be playing it, Will. I'm not yeah, very July interested. 16th. I'm not very interested in it. Nope. Sorry. Uh, all right. What else do we got here? Uh, Netflix is working on a game streaming service, apparently. Yes. Allegedly. Uh, Nintendo is seriously considering expanding into gaming, according to several Netflix. reports from the past few days. I said Netflix. You said Nintendo. <laughs> Netflix you said Nintendo, is which is definitely in gaming already. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Netflix, the online streaming platform and sometimes a DVD rental service by mail, so we're clear, Netflix is seriously considering expanding into gaming, according to several reports from the past few days. Not only is the streaming giant rumored to be looking to hire a gaming executive to oversee the effort, but it's also reportedly mulling building its own version of an Apple Arcade like gaming bundle. The news first broke following an information report on Friday in which an unnamed gaming source were unnamed gaming sources were cited by Netflix had approached veteran game industry executives about joining the company. The report went on to say that while Netflix's gaming strategy is still up in the air, one potential option uh, was to launch an online subscription gaming bundle based on Netflix's own titles. But while many details have yet to be ironed out, the information claims that Netflix has already decided its games won't feature advertising. Reuters and Axios also cooperated that Netflix is on the hunt for a gaming executive. The Axios report also cites two anonymous sources saying the gaming bundle would be a smaller Apple Arcade that would feature a mix of licensed Netflix intellectual property and original work from independent studios. It's part Netflix provided a statement to the information Axios and Polygon that its members value the variety and quality of its content, as well as interactive shows like Black Mirror Bandersnatch and You vs. Wild and games based on Stranger Things, La Casa de Papel, and To All the Boys. So not, so not a hard no, but not an outright confirmation either. The move into gaming is likely an attempt to boost its subscriber base as the company has been slowly grow has seen slowing growth in the US market and increased competition from rivals. In the past, Netflix has pointed to Epic Games as Fortnite as bigger competition for eyeballs than HBO or Hulu. Netflix is also no stranger to the potential of building out content based on gaming titles. The Witcher, Resident Evil, Castlevania, Dota, uh, Angry Birds, Assassin's Creed, and Cyberpunk are just some of the video game adaptations Netflix either produced or has in the works. It also has its own history of teaming up with outside studios to create games based on its own IP, see Stranger Things 3. So far, reports say Netflix purported, Netflix's purported gaming service should la could launch as early as 2022. However, nothing's been set in stone yet, and considering Google and Amazon's failing attempts at their own online streaming services, Netflix could just scrap the idea altogether. That's, I think this is another one of those things where uh, it's a big company and they're going to always have like something in development and it might not necessarily see, right. see, see the light of the day. They just got to see where they could position themselves in the market right. and where the market is going. I, I, th I mean, this article makes it, sound like, makes it sound like they're serious about it. Right. Like they're serious about doing some sort of gaming streaming service ideal um uh, i'm a little confused um where was it uh one potential option was to launch an online subscription gaming bundle on netflix's own titles what the hell does that mean games based on their own titles i think so so they'd have to develop games based on their own like like make new games based on like Stranger Things or Black Mirror that's or a, that's a terrible idea. Yeah, that that's a that's a that that's Amazon's that, that's a, biggest that's a problem. For disaster, yeah. <laughs> that's where Amazon went wrong. Um, yeah, 
they yeah they have to buy studio that i don't know people always say that um exclusives are what's going to sell your 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 platform and i don't that's just i mean it's it's true and it's not they, they help but there's there's so many other factors that go yeah. into like whether or not your system's going to be a success yeah ease of use um you know availability uh messaging like that that, think, was, that was a big reason why the xbox one died i think or, that's like, all barely survived i think that's the most important when it comes to a streaming platform because the whole purpose yeah. of the streaming games is the ease of use um or or accessibility uh and a lot of streaming services are failing at that um well that or they're failing in another way the messaging um yeah you used to be able to get games from netflix but when, when it was a mail thing right really i thought so am i, am I wrong with are that? you confusing that with gamefly uh maybe because <laughs> gamefly was a, was a separate <laughs> no thing. i know Still what gamefly is. is i was gonna suggest netflix should just buy gamefly um, uh, maybe yeah <laughs> but it seems like that's not what they want to do they want to like uh they want it to be a streaming thing because I think they know that yeah. that mailing uh, discs is probably not the future. Uh, Skycast says you could get games from boxes, oh, like Redbox. Yeah. Um, you could definitely get games from Netflix back in the physical day, says Kikoba. That's what I thought. Um, so it, it also it seems like i think netflix is just so big there's no more subscribers that they could possibly get <laughs> so <laughs> so like they need to do something else that they, they, they can't grow any bigger you know yeah so they need uh they need to go into another market and i guess that's that's what they're exploring they're i, I feel like this is just the exploration um oh it's definitely just exploration but i i, I feel like there there is a tinge of seriousness to it because i know i know like a few like a few days ago separate of this they were looking for an executive to oversee the video game adaptations that they do mm. as this see, see in the article they have a lot of them they got more coming they have a sonic the hedgehog series coming to netflix uh castlevania just wrapped but they're doing a devil may cry series soon they're uh they're doing a resident evil film and i think the movie's going to netflix mm -hmm. So they have all these like video game adaptations that they're doing and people seem to like them, the ones that come out and are successful. So they see there's there's potential in it. They can do the adaptation. Maybe they can go the other way and do gaming. Uh, I think that there is room for a streaming service for video games. And I think that uh, Netflix is one of the platforms that could potentially make it work. Um, yeah. But I think Microsoft is crushing it right now. I think Microsoft is going to really lead the way with 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 game streaming. Um, yeah. Anyway, we have a lot more to talk about here that I uh, I <laughs> I I thought we were like going slowly to the end, but no, we have we have we still have a lot more to go. Yeah. Um. Sweet Potato Moose is also is it me or does every game console have a bad UI? I have not found a game console with a gui that i like the 3ds comes closest to balancing simplicity and feature set i guess it's not just you they do all have a very bad ui i yeah. agree i think the the xbox 360 blade system is probably the closest to being mm, a good design no but then that got rebooted to like metro and now whatever it is and now uh, the xbox one has I'll be honest. Craft design. I think the Nintendo Switch has a great design, even though everybody says, "Oh, we need folders and we need uh, we need <laughs> backgrounds." I actually, honestly, think that the UI of the Nintendo Switch is great. The only thing I wish it had was uh, uh, uh folders would be great, and a way to pin games yeah. to the home screen would also be great. Yeah. Or a way to swap yeah, the I alphabetical think... order would be great. The the Switch does not, does have a good design. It's just it's very basic like it doesn't do anything yeah but the simplicity is really games. important no it is but i think you know adding like you said a, a way to sort alphabetically hmm. or you know folders it doesn't need like wallpaper or anything because that just becomes distracting um but yeah uh 
the PS4 and the PS5 they have they have something similar to the Switch, but it's so like busy with all this crap that you don't need. The Xbox One and by extension the series consoles like they've gotten better, but they're still not great. It's still a lot of crap that you don't need. I always have to figure out how to turn off the PlayStation Five because it's different now. It, you don't just hold down the PlayStation button and click off. Yeah, you have to do like uh, you have to do something else. I think you just I don't even remember. I have to like hold it and like mess around for a little bit until I can finally turn it off. Um, yeah. Yeah, they're not. No, they're none of them are good. <laughs> you know what's worse? Car uh, navigation systems or whatever you call it. The the oh uh, yeah. Car, there, there's yeah, hasn't the, been a, the touch, yeah, yeah the touchscreen displays in cars. Yeah. Yeah, there's never been a good one ever in the history they're all, of ever. They're all terrible. Maybe Tesla was. I I liked the way Jeep did it, but then they also do like weird crap, like all the like weather and climate controls are on the touchscreen. And if I want to change something, I don't want to fumble around on the touchscreen. I just want to press the button for my heated seat or like the temperature. Yeah, yeah. And and and, and it, that's arguably where it where simplicity is the most important in a fucking car. Yeah. You're driving, you don't want to have to fuddle around with something with your right hand. Yeah. Um Anyway, uh moving on new time splitters game coming from free radical design reformed will this you are a big time splitters fan damn right i'm a big time splitters fan time time splitters is great i forgot like almost everything about time splitters other than it was good i enjoyed what i played but Uh, i forgot everything about it to to be clear when people say they like time splitters what they they mean is they like time splitters too (laughs) I don't know anybody who's played Time Splitters one. If they say they've played it, they're a liar. Mm-hmm. Um, and Time Splitters three, Future Perfect. Uh, I know people have played that game, but nobody ever talks about that game. Mm-hmm. It's always mm-hmm. just Time Splitters two, which is fair because Time Splitters two is fucking incredible. And now, after being um, down for many years, they're back. Time Splitters is back, or at least it's on its way back with a new game from the original developers. Publisher Deep Silver Deep Silver has announced the creation of a new studio that will be tasked with developing a new entry in the series, and you might be familiar with the names. According to the press release, key original members from the team at Free Radical Design, the studio that originally developed the series, are coming back, including Steve Ellis and David Doak. The new studio is called Free Radical Design. And here you see a statement from Deep Silver um, saying that, yeah, we're, we're bringing Time Splitters back, and we got the original creators back uh time splitters debuted in 2000 and saw two additional sequels but fans have been waiting a long time for a new entry it is this unique style that has earned the time splitter series a large and passionate fan base uh who will without doubt da- without doubt be excited for the formation of d silver's latest studio and will look forward to learning more of as the franchise moves forward um so basically if you're not familiar the time splitters games were originally made by free radical design which were all the people who were responsible for making GoldenEye and Perfect Dark at Rare. They left mm. Rare to form their own studio for Radical Design, and then they made the Time Splitter series. Um, three games on the PS2, GameCube, and Xbox era, original Xbox era. Um, they tried to do a Time Splitters 4, which never got off the ground despite some concepts. Um, Free Radical was then bought, then bought by Crytek became Crytek UK, um, were tasked to make Homefront the Revolution, never finished that game because of pay disputes. Deep Silver bought uh, Crytek UK, finished Homefront the Revolution, was very bad except for a Time Splitters 2 Easter egg in it. Um, (laughs) And now, since Deep Silver now owns Crytek UK, which by by that extent, means they own time splitters they've decided let's bring back time splitters because that's what the people want and that's what they're doing um is that what the people want i know that's what the fans yes, want, what the but, people want but how many fans are left will this is a long time ago time splitters we're all still here we're all still here <laughs> and by we i mean ma- mainly my friend group chat <laughs> but we I don't want it we're all gonna buy it 
I didn't realize how close this was to uh, uh, Goldeneye. It has the same like health system and everything. Same health system, the same way they hold the guns mm -hmm. one-handed and the reload is just down and up. It's it's just basic. It's the closest there's ever been to like a go a true GoldenEye sequel or true Perfect Dark sequel. Speaking of, we are getting a new Perfect Dark. Let's not we forget about that Perfect either. Dark. I I am excited for it. I am also excited for that. I would never played the Xbox yeah. 360 one. Uh, I heard uh, it's very bad, I but I would like to. What I played of it embarrassed me. <laughs> we own it. I ate it. We own it. I've played a little bit of it, and I really don't want to play any more of it. I kind of want to give it a try. Maybe I'll take it. Will that work? That'll yeah, work, you can right? take. Yeah, it'll work. I have it on Rare Replay, so we have two copies, technically. It's on Rare Replay? It's on Rare Replay. Is that Game Pass? Could be. Uh, nope. Uh... Oh, it's not. No, no, I clicked the wrong thing. Another another thing, uh, you can't... The friggin' the Xbox Series X version of Resident Evil Village is not available anywhere. Sold out of Really? Yo, Rare Replay included in Game Pass. Nice. Getting it now. Do it. Uh, why don't you just download, then, Resident Evil Village? I want a physical one, Will. I gotta hurry up and finish Doom Eternal because I want to play 7 and then I want to play Village. I want to do it in order. Install on my device, you bitch. Oh, it just wasn't. <laughs> it, well, I wasn't logged in. Uh, Alright. Cool. All right. So, I mean... Alright, that's cool. They're making a new uh, Time Splitters. Uh, this is going to be a long yes. time. This is they, they, they formed right. the studio to make it, so... Yeah, I mean... We've been waiting this long. I'm sure we'll be willing to wait a little longer. Uh, mm -hmm. I just, I'm happy that we're getting it because this is a series that should have had like 30 installments by now. Um, yeah, all I got to say. Thank you for the 50 bits, Nemesy. I appreciate it. Uh, here's an original Xbox Easter egg that remained hidden for nearly 20 years. A developer who worked on the Microsoft's original t 2001 Xbox console who wishes to remain anonymous informed Kotaku of a hidden Easter egg in the Xbox's dashboard that remained undiscovered for nearly 20 years. He told us how to trigger the secret, which displays a previously unknown credit screen. Sure enough, it works. Uh, the main wow. Easter egg they refer to, known for many years, uh, is... Oh, sorry. Skip the whole paragraph. I didn't really expect it to be found... Well, not unless the source code leaked or somebody reverse engineered the dashboard. Um, it triggers. Its trigger was the same as the main Easter egg, so I knew it was possible. I figured somebody would have leaked it, uh, leaked it for it to be known. The main Easter egg they refer to, known for many years, is triggered by going into the audio CD ripping screen and naming a new rip. Um, brackets, brackets, egg eggs box brackets brackets you see it on screen it's spelled a particular way yes as soon as you hit done this immediately triggers a hidden credits roll after which the console reboots the easter egg we're revealing today starts in a similar manner by entering the magic string before ripping a cd but instead of triggering immediately it requires waiting for the cd rip to complete we'll then find that the system info screen has changed to something new uh, before starting, go to settings and then system info to remind yourself of what that screen looks like. Okay, good. The trick is, and then, then they tell you how to do the trick. Go to music and insert an audio CD. A short album will take less time. Uh, sorry, 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 sorry. Carry on. From the audio CD screen, choose copy, copy again, and then new soundtrack. Uh, delete the previous soundtrack title and replace it with an uh, T I M M and then a whole bunch of Y's, 26 Y's, <laughs> uh, and an exclamation point. Timmy. Timmy. Timmy with 26 Y's and an exclamation point. Uh, 
sit 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 a spell enjoy the sounds of the hard drive stealing the music's essence uh when the ripping completes back out into the main menu choose settings and then go to system info you should now see a new screen listing members of the xbox dashboard team this little credit screen has been lurking below the surface of some 24 million xbox consoles for nearly two decades Naturally, we had questions about the leakers' bona fides, but they produced sufficient evidence to back up their claims about being part of the original Xbox development team. They also, upon request, produced the raw footage we use to make the video above. So in the video above, you can see uh, Bob is playing on screen how to go through it. Sadly, efforts to test the Easter egg in-house were thwarted as all of Kotaku's original Xbox consoles have either been lost, hidden somewhere off in off-site storage, or died in boxes with the last year within the last year. Uh, thankfully, stalwart Konami PC archivist Ray Berholt agreed to test it on his own working console and gave us the all-clear. The trick is legit. Thank you, Ray. What happens? So, I, I still don't know what happens. You get a screen that lists the members of the Xbox dashboard team. So it's a different credits. It's a different credits. Oh, so the, the, the old the old Easter egg gave you credits and the new Easter egg just gives you a separate version of the credits. <laughs> yeah. It wow. changes the system info screen. To, it changes the system info screen to reveal who worked on the Xbox dashboard. If they knew about that, I mean, at least four people should have known about this. So how has it not been yeah. leaked? Very strange. Yeah. I think, you know, the Xbox only sold 24 million units compared to the PlayStation 2's like 124 million units. Mm -hmm. So not many people had an original Xbox. So the fact that it took this long to reveal, it honestly isn't surprising to me. The system was not as popular as people make it out to be. Yeah, but, I mean, if you made that Easter egg, or if you were part of that Easter egg, wouldn't you want people to know about it? There's four people that didn't say anything for 20 years. <laughs> I am surprised it took them this long. I I'm surprised they didn't do it, like, 10 years after it was released. Right. Um... Anyway, we got real shenanigans with 12 months. Thank you very much. Hey, Bob and Will. Can't believe it's already been a year. Thanks for continuing to be awesome. Thank you very much, no Real problem. Shenanigans. I appreciate you. Um, next news. that We'll do this quick. Call of Duty right. adds Rambo and John McClane. I'm sure yes. Will was shocked to hear this. <laughs> yeah. I'm more shocked because Rambo is already in a video game. He's in Mortal Kombat 11. Yeah. Voiced by Sylvester Stallone, nonetheless. I don't think he's voiced. Uh, I don't think either of these guys are voiced by the real voice actors. Probably not. Uh, well, I don't know. Bruce Willis takes a lot of shitty roles now. <laughs> so, so just real quick. They added like an 80s, like this new season of Warzone is like 80s action movie themed. Um, yeah. Yeah. You obviously you can play. Uh, there's a character skin for Rambo and John McClane, and there's voice. There's voices too, but it's not. It's I don't know what it is. It sounds weird. Um, yeah. But on top of that, they added Nakatomi Plaza, just in the middle yes. of downtown in um, in Warzone. And there's yes. in Call of Duty Warzone, there's missions that you can do while you're playing the game to get money. Um, in this freaking game. Uh, they added some missions around Nakatomi Plaza, three of them. And if you complete one of them, you get $100,000 in the game for your whole team. Uh, not not real money. It's in-game money. Um, and you each get specialists. A specialist bonus uh, means you get all of the perks in the game. So normally you can only have three perks with your loadout. This yeah. allows you to have all of them. So basically, you turn into a god in the game. But if you if you, <laughs> if you uh, complete the Nakatomi Plaza mission, and obviously yeah. everybody swarms it, so it's really hard to 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 come out on top in Nakatomi Plaza. Also, Nakatomi Plaza is really complicated to navigate through because everything's all, it's hard mm -hmm. to get to the different floors and stuff. Um, I don't know yeah. if that was intentional because that's kind of like what the movie's like. <laughs> um, there's also they added an attack helicopter that just shoots everybody yeah. 
spiraling around uh, Nakatomi Plaza. It's actually really cool, like what they ended up doing. Um, yeah, it looks really cool. Besides that, uh, I think Warzone has been great right now. Um, the weapons have been actually relatively balanced. So, like, uh, when Season 1 first happened, uh, th there were some guns that were, like, way overpowered and that made the game kind of not fun. But right now, you could pretty much use a lot. There's a lot of great guns, and, and you could pretty much whatever you pick, you can have a lot of fun with. Um, so it's a great time to jump into warzone right now this is actually a really really fun yeah. uh thing that they added again it's pretty much impossible for you to come out on top of nakatomi plaza especially if you just download the game now and drop in nakatomi plaza it's gonna probably be a hard time but um it's uh it's cool uh and yeah i think you need to you need to pay for rambo and 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 uh uh what's Lame. his name yeah, McLean, right? You can't just you can't just get uh, them. I, hold on, let me pull the page up. I didn't see. Yeah, it's it's a pack, uh, tracer pack. Yeah, Rambo. You get uh, the knife, two of his guns, and then you get the character skin. Um, and then there's a Die Hard bundle. Uh, doesn't say uh, McLean, but I assume he's part of it. Yeah, it, it's they haven't shown the McLean character model. Oh, he it says, no, J Rambo and John McClane are brand new Call of Duty operators. They are not skins for previously released operators. Uh, they don't show McClane here, but he's in the game. You can he's you yeah. can get him now. Uh, and they both. Yeah, look great. I've, that's what I'm saying. I, I haven't seen like the John McClane model in any of like the promotional material. It's all been the Rambo model. Uh. Yeah, there's, there's like no pictures. What the hell? Yeah. Oh, this is it. This is what he looks like. It's a very. This is a very bad picture. Yeah, there it is. That's him. Uh, he's holding, yep. I think, a DMR or something. Yeah, and I be I believe you have to pay for it. Um. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Twenty four hundred cod points or a sixteen point uh sixteen euros and seventy nine pence. What do they call that? <laughs> sixteen pounds. Sorry, pounds. Pounds. Yeah, pounds. I think it's like twenty bucks. Um. Anyway, it's cool. I encourage you to check it out if you haven't played Cores uh, Warzone or just watch a stream of somebody doing it because uh, it is <laughs> it is really cool to see. Or just watch Die Hard. <laughs> Or just watch and die hard. We have one more story here. Yes, I actually deleted the original last story because honestly, who cares that there's a PS3 version of Gears 3 out there somewhere? This yeah. is more interesting, and I feel like you would like it a whole lot because there's finally going to be a physical edition of Mega Man The Wily Wars for Sega Genesis available in North America. This is really freaking cool. Yeah. Limited Run Games is releasing a physical edition of Mega Man the Wa the Wily Wars which was a Genesis Sega Genesis compilation of the first 3 Mega Man games. Um it was only released in Japan and Europe and was only available in North America via the Sega Channel which was a weird cartridge thing that you hooked up to your Genesis via a cable modem to download games to. Uh, and I believe it's on the Sega Genesis Classic console. Um, uh, you are correct. You are yes. correct. But now, Limited Run Games is creating a physical copy of it for you to buy in conjunction with Retrobit. And it comes with all of these fancy things. It comes with a blue cartridge that is compatible in a Genesis and Mega Drive. So it is... Uh, region free wow color instruction manual uh collector's cards uh interchangeable lenticular cards a double-sided poster a sticker collection uh and a certificate of authenticity <laughs> uh 70 whole package bucks will, yeah will be available for pre-order uh from may 21st 
to June twentieth at midnight. Oh, we missed it. No, it's still going. Oh, until okay, June twentieth. Oh, I can pre-order hey, now. Yeah, can pre-order now. Oh, I thought it was going to yeah. be like sold out immediately. Uh, I want this. I'm going to get this. No, I think it's still. Up. This is freaking yeah. awesome. Uh, the only uh, Sega Genesis uh, Mega Man game. Yes. Uh, and not um, an American thing. So yeah. I need this in my life. This is really cool. First time it's officially. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. it was on. It was Sega Channel and. Uh, Sega Channel. Yeah, it's the first the time it was. It's. It's the first time there's a an official cartridge version of this game. Right. So oh. yeah, I'm freaking getting this. This is sick. Yeah. Um. Oh, they pre-orders close on June twentieth. Jeez. Yeah. So you got time. That's really cool. I'm happy about that. Uh, that's a lot of money, seventy bucks. But honestly, that's probably what it cost back in the day when yeah. it came out. No, definitely. And uh, think of it this way: you're just getting all this <laughs> other crap. Yeah, yeah, you're getting a lot with it. Anyway, uh, guys, that's all the stories we have for today. Yeah. So that means that means. Quit of the week. Quit of the week. Quit of the week. I'm going to lower the Tweet of the Week audio. I'm going to blow everybody's eardrums out. Uh, tweet of the Week, guys. Uh, we have two this week. I saw two that were funny and worth worth showing. Uh, this one right here is from Burn Your Cosmos. It says, Counter-Strike fans, when they strike the counter, I don't know, never played it, and it's a broken countertop. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. And the second one is from Keith John Stack. And it's it's like a shady looking guy in an alleyway going to buy oh. something from another shady guy in a trench coat. And he pulls out Sega Genesis Sonic 1. It says not for resale. <laughs> I like how, at least on my screen, the first reply is somebody explaining the joke. Yes. Yes, and it's 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 the picture of Sonic, right? The the cartridge. No, no, I I have someone who actually spells it out like to ruin the joke and to explain why it has not for resale label oh, is quite it. simple. Sega made a special label for copies bundled with new Genesis systems to make sure that shady retailers didn't just take the game from the bundle and sell it on its own. Yeah, I mean. I've seen not for resale a lot. I mean, GameStop used to trade in games that said not for resale, and we we would yeah. sell it all the time. Um, yeah, because what are they gonna do? You can't, you can't. Uh, you could sell this on eBay and stuff. It, it is you could resell it. It's really just like them trying to discourage yeah. you from reselling it. There's no yeah. law that says you can't I, resell it. Yeah, I, it was it was really just because I think at the time there weren't a lot of you know it, it was easier to get. A Sega Genesis with Sonic than it was to buy Sonic on its own. They they so didn't if you want... saw enough for resale, if you saw enough for resale, that meant somebody took it out of the system. Yeah, they didn't want like Sears or somebody to take yeah. the, the Sonic out of the box. Um, and we still see it. We saw it with the Wii with Wii Sports. It's said not for resale on it, but yeah. not as big. Like this is the bi yeah. Sonic one is the biggest I've seen not for resale. Yeah. It is so like grotesque looking. <laughs> Sonic Two has also has not for resale on it, but it's like a little badge in the corner. It's not it's not as huge as that. Uh oh yeah, there it is. Yeah, I think there are three versions of Sonic One. There's the not for resale. There's the one that doesn't have not for resale on it. And then there's one released years later after the formation of the ESRB that has an ESRB rating on it. And mm -hmm. that version of the game is rare and goes for a lot of money. Oh. Interesting. All right. Now we will talk to you people. Yeah. As always, you can reach us on Twitter using... The no, that was the old podcast. That's dead and buried. You can't. You can't you talk to us on Twitter. Twitter. I will stab you. Yeah. Yeah. However, you can talk to us on last week's Wolf Den Podcast over on our YouTube channel, Wolf Den Podcast. And if you left a comment over there, this is the part of the show where we will answer you. And of course, ladies and gentlemen watching us at home, please start leaving your questions and comments because we will get to them when we are done with everybody else. We got a comment from Seven. 
who says, what the hell? I already have a million copies of GTA 5, so I might as well get it again on PS5. No point in, in being sensible now. He's got a point, Will. <laughs> yeah. Um, from, from the guy who, you know, has how many copies of Resident Evil 4 <laughs> and Sonic 2 and uh, I whatnot. I do want to play the online for Grand Theft Auto, but not paying another $60 for it. Yeah. Oh, wait, it's going to be on Game Pass. Uh, Never mind. Melon says, kind of dig the folks in the apartment talking in the background. Gives a neat cafe atmosphere <laughs> vibe. I'm sorry about that. There's nothing I could do about that. Yeah. Uh, Green HX, God of Green HX says, uh, Sonic Jam for the Sega Saturn was my first Se Sonic game. Uh, classic Sonic games are my favorite, so I am so hyped. Thanks for sharing. Yo, let me tell you, classic Sonic games, every Sonic fan's favorite. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Emily Van Engen says, while comparing Game Boy sizes, Bob says, one's got an actual butt <laughs> and then ponders his own lack of posterior. Uh, I kid, I kid. Great content as usual, gentle bros. Yo, let me tell you, I got no butt. Zero butt over here. Um, and am I lying? The Game Boy Color has a butt. Yeah, it's got a like a, a noticeable like curve. It's got a noticeable it butt in, in its bottom area. Yeah. Uh, Elik uh, zero eight two. This is all from last week's Wolf Den Live in the comments, by the yeah. way. Uh, the Wolf Bros. No news. It was a slow week. Two hours and thirteen topics later. <laughs> It's a lot of nonsense is what it is. Yeah, generally when we say no news, it basically means no interesting news. <laughs> right. It, it, Nothing we, that really feels important to talk about. We're coming at you from the top saying this is going to be a bad show. Strap in, boys. Yeah. <laughs> or we're going to do a we're going to make a whole we're going to talk a whole lot about nothing today. Yeah. Uh anyway, now we're in the chat. Uh, Mecha Dragon with 100 bits says, How many copies of Sonic the Hedgehog for Genesis each of you bros have? Any versions allowed? All uh, right. So, wait, the original? The original. Okay, so I, we, I think we. We, ha we definitely have it on the Genesis. Because yes. I went through a thing where I wanted to buy every Sonic game. Um, yes, and we did. So we have it on the Genesis. I have it for, I believe, Android and iOS. <laughs> so both. I think I do too. Probably just iOS, though. You never had an Android phone. I had an Android tablet. My Kindle was Android. Oh, and it was, it was free on the Kindle store. That's why I had it on yes. Android. Okay, so five already. Yeah. I have the, um, I have the Genesis collection on the Switch. So do I. So that's already. Uh, I have uh, the... Um, I have... The, uh, I think, it's, I, think I have it on console. Steam. I think I have it on Steam as I a don't bundle. Have it on Steam. Uh, and yes, you I have it on the classic it on, console. Yeah. Uh, I have it on the PS3 version of the sonic's genesis collection do we not have it for 360 no we had sonic cd for 360 oh i have it i have it on my xbox one that is 11 and i think that that's 11 i think that's all we I think that's all we got yeah Whew. i'm sweating now it's probably the same for sonic 2 just to be clear yeah yeah it's a lot there's a lot of overlap for sonic 2 yeah um Anyway, uh, Man of Steel with 100 bits. If you can only get a physical version of Cyber Shadow or the new TMNT announced at E3 from LRG, which do you choose? What What's the TMNT situation? Oh, the, the new TMNT game that they announced. He's asking if you, we had to choose between a physical version of Cyber Shadow or the new TMNT game. A uh, physical version of that from Limited oh, Run Games. Oh, to be choose. announced at E3. I thought he was saying that yeah. there will be a Turtles game announced at E3. Um, <laughs> me and Will are going to have very different opinions here. 
Uh, yeah. I think the Turtles game is going to be really good. I'm a really big fan of Cyber Shadow, so I would rather Cyber Shadow be a... Uh, I'd rather Cyber Shadow have a physical release. I, I would 100% Ninja Turtles but, physical but release. I don't think I would buy a physical release of Cyber Shadow, honestly. I already have it. I don't think I, I, don't think I yeah. need to look at it like with my own eyeballs. <laughs> Me and Will had a little I conversation... Mean, before this, did. before the stream about Cyber Shadow, and he said yeah. uh, he didn't like it that much. I don't think I don't think I like that game. I don't think I'm a, not a fan of that game. I really think that it I is a fair difficulty. I tried. I, I, I try. I don't think it's fair. I, I it's unfair, and I think it's unfair to the point of not being fun. See, see, I I'm very conscious of a game throwing stuff at you and killing you to make you learn. I hate that about the original Mega Man. The original Mega Man will just kill you and then be like, "Oh, you should have known better. Try again next time." Also, Donkey yeah. Kong Country does that, and it it makes everybody. That's what gets everybody to turn on me is when I say that Donkey Kong Country does shit like that, and that's why I don't like Donkey Kong Country. Um, I don't think Cyber Shadow does that. I, I think, think does. Ninja Guy think- does that. Ninja Gaiden does that. I think Ninja Gaiden does it. I think Cyber Shadow takes inspiration from Ninja Gaiden. I think Ninja Gaiden... I mean, I think Cyber Shadow... I mean, yeah. Cyber Shadow asks... It asks you to to do too much at once. It asks you to keep focused on what's in front of you, what's behind you, what you're jumping over, and it will make you do all of that at the same time. But but and I don't think that's fair. But I think that it it the way it, that game works is it slowly gets you to a point where things get really chaotic and you should have all of the tools with you necessary to yeah. navigate through it. Within the first twenty minutes of playing, though, is not the, the place <laughs> for that to be. Do you think the messenger uh, is better at that? Yes, because the messenger while also very difficult is also fair because it like it's a learning process because it's not about the enemies it's about the platforming Mm -hmm. and it's about you know seeing what's in front of you and focusing on just what's in front of you not everything around you and i think that's much more fair to the player than just throwing shit and you know you better get it or otherwise fuck you i i honestly i i had a really good time with cyber shadow i mean i don't know if it's uh, listen i play a lot of platformers will maybe i'm <laughs> just so good at them that i've maybe. just i just lost all perspective from plebeians like you <laughs> but i honestly i honestly thought it was it was really good <laughs> I, mean, I equated not, the not difficulty to tried... Super Meat Boy because that's I mean but yeah. Super Meat Boy you die and it feels fine because you could just restart like Super Meat Boy you learn from yeah. dying um, yeah exactly it's but it never feels good. unfair it never feels like something came out of nowhere except for Super Meat Boy forever right. things did well, yeah, come out of nowhere that's procedurally generated yeah yeah no Super Meat Boy and games like The Messenger are like you don't have to worry about so many different things you just worry about like one thing at a time and like, yeah, you can die, but then you, like when you start back, you know how to get past, you know, A, B, and C. You can focus on D, and if you get past D, you go to E, and so forth and so on. But you know, Cyber Shadow just doesn't do that. You have to deal with the entire alphabet from the go, like immediately. Should, should I replay Cyber Shadow? I had a lot of fun with it. I loved it. Maybe I should replay the I know, Messenger. I know is what did. I should do. Yeah, I know. If I started because I off of the messenger but i know if i started playing it now I, there's no fucking way i'd be able to pick it up again <laughs> yeah that I was ha- a game that requires yeah. rhythm and precision and if you lose that you ain't getting it back i should replay the messenger from the beginning i never beat the messenger neither did i and like i i forgot why i stopped it i think it was probably play something else the messenger was very good i got really i would recommend the messenger um this is my sonic by the way <laughs> it's not great i forgot you were drawing sonic uh, I, I finished this a while ago i just never showed it um anyway hey willow davis thanks for the raid and also yeah beat em ups thank you for the raid while we were uh, arguing about cyber shadow uh thanks for being here how was woods podcast 
I'm trying to get Wood to do a pre-recorded segment for next week's podcast. Yeah. Uh, we'll see how that goes. You guys talking about shampoo? <laughs> got long hair. <laughs> that was mean. <laughs> That was like a bully. It's like, like what a bully would say. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, anyway, um, Mama the best. Thank you for the eight months. I appreciate you. Um, and Kenzo B Extreme. Thank you for the four months. Four months. Woo. Thank you. Uh, all right. We'll take a few more questions and then I got to pee. All right, uh, Cyrus, question for Bob. Have you ever thought about doing a video on flash cartridges, like the EverDrive, for instance? Yes. Actually, EverDrive hit me up. Uh, oh. And I've always wanted one. Yeah. Uh, I just never really thought, like, an EverDrive video would do good because they've been around for, like, a million years. Uh, I need yeah. to, I feel like I need to, like, come up with an idea for, like, an EverDrive video. But I, I, yeah. I've always wanted to do an EverDrive video. Uh, I've always wanted to play around with an EverDrive. I, f- I feel like I could do uh, that would help a lot. They're expensive though. EverDrives. They're very expensive, um, and there are, there are different versions of EverDrives for, like there are like three different versions of the Ever of the EverDrive just for like the Game Boy alone. Right. Because like they all have different features and sizes and whatnot. Also, Ever I know EverDrive isn't the only company that does it, but they're like the biggest company. Right. Yeah. Uh. Not gonna lie, they're expensive, but I have two and they work flawlessly. Yeah, I, I they seem like really cool, so I'm 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 down yeah. to try it for sure. The, the the stupid little Game Boy Advance uh uh, uh cartridges that I got, those kind of, I mean they're cool because oh, because yeah. they work just like a Game Boy Advance cartridge, and there's like limited storage. But playing ROMs off of those is, is stupid because you you yeah they only hold one ROM basically. Um. Anyway, uh, for those of you who don't know, an EverDrive, you it's a flash storage device where you could you play like on. They have them for like every retro console that's cartridge based. Yeah, right? you, you you load yeah you load ROMs onto a cartridge and you put that cartridge into the appropriate system and you can play the games from there and it runs flawlessly. It holds lots of ROMs, so so like yeah. you, you it's not just one ROM per cartridge. You can yeah. load up uh, like your whole library onto it. Some of them have SD card slots, so you can like swap out SD cards and load as many as you can. So you could potentially have your entire Game Boy library on one cartridge, yeah. uh, which is really really cool. Yeah, but but they're expensive. Hmm. Um, what else do we got? Give us more questions. Uh, Porkchop78, what did you guys think of Sonic Underground? The only thing I remember was the theme song was a banger. Did you ever watch Sonic Underground? I don't think I did, honestly. That was... So there were three Sonic cartoons in the 90s. There was, oh, um, the this is the one with Sonic the three Hedgehog. characters. This is the one where Sonic has a brother and a sister and they form a rock band. That show is crap. <laughs> yeah, this looks terrible. Like, actual crap. It is not good. The theme song... It, like is a banger in the loosest sense of the term um, <laughs> why, why is knuckles like squished <laughs> i don't know it was, Someone it was bopped weird. Him on the head yeah yeah this looks very bad yeah no, it's, it is not a good show uh jaleel white who was the voice of sonic um in sonic sad i am and adventures of sonic was also the voice of sonic in this and his brother and sister <laughs> oh my god that's crazy yeah. Uh, uh, streaming on Paramount Plus. Do not watch it. <laughs> um. It sounds like they were on a budget. Well, I mean, he was yeah. the guy. He was like the voice yeah. actor. Um. All right. I think we're. I think we're good here. Right. Yeah. Thanks for hanging yeah, out, everybody. Can. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolf Den Podcast is every single Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash wolfden. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, 
We always put it up as an archive version over on the YouTube channel, Wolf Den Podcast. So go and subscribe to that so you can watch the show on demand whenever you want. If you prefer to listen to us, though, rather than watch us, you can do that as well. We're also an audio podcast on anchor.fm slash Wolf Den Podcast and your preferred podcast service of choice. But no matter where you listen to us or watch us, though, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps us with placement on all of those respective stores. Guys, thanks for being here. I will definitely be streaming on Thursday. I don't know about tomorrow, uh, but uh, I, don't know. I don't even know what we're going to do. Also, later this week on Thursday, we will have a video out on this guy. It's the Power A's $100 Pro Controller. <laughs> it's more expensive than a Pro Controller. So we'll see how that goes. It's like it's kind of like an Elite Controller. Um, yeah. So I will be playing around with that tonight to see what I think of it. All uh, So far, it's pretty premium. Um, guys, go watch Nicole B right now. She just became a Twitch partner. Today's her first partner stream. And she is currently crying. So go go, <laughs> oh. go have a good time over there. <laughs> go um, cheer her up. Go, no, it's like, a, it look, it seems like a happy cry situation. Um, so everybody enjoy that. Go over there and say hi and say congratulations. And we'll see you all uh, next week or on the next Twitch stream. Goodbye. Bye.